The portal flooded with Dukes. It's locked on Sunbelt. You are locked on Sunbelt, your daily podcast on the Sunbelt Conference, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. All right, welcome back to another edition of Locked On Sunbelt, your team every day. I'm your host, Dave Schultz. Uh, a lot was going on. Went to the Cajuns game, watching uh, the Pelicans play. Uh, we got the Red Wolves playing on ESPN2. Uh, so a lot's going on. But as one may think, so we'll talk about the Red Wolves, we'll talk about the Cajuns, and we'll, we'll recap what happened uh, Tuesday night uh, in baseball. Great comeback for South Alabama late. And unfortunately, boy, Coastal Carolina and Clemson at having that game canceled due to weather. That's a shame. <laughs> that that's a shame. Um, all right, so let's talk about what's happening in the transfer portal. Obviously, Mark Byington. I mean, very quickly, right? I mean, he had that job. The game ended late. No, not that late, right? The game would have ended. 615 on Sunday. He had the job less than 24 hours later on Monday. It was reported at 1230 Central Time, so 130 Eastern Time before that. And so now, what do you get? First thing in the morning, or shortly thereafter, maybe mid maybe mid-morning or early afternoon. Terrence Edwards Jr. hits a transfer portal, also going to go uh and dip his toe in the NBA draft, which I think he should. Okay. I think they make it much easier for players to go into the draft process, find out what the draft process is all about, see where they would be drafted and see if it's worth going. Now you can get some NIL money. <coughs> Excuse me. If you're going to stick around, but you can also find out what you need to work on. And I think we kind of saw what he needs to work on. He needs to be able to go past, you know, slower, bigger players, that's going to happen in the NBA all the time. He's going to get switched out on, on somebody who's taller than he is, that he should be quicker than. So he's got to work on his ball handling skills, probably some uh, shooting skills. I would presume he's coming back. But uh, they, they do make it much easier for you to go through the process without giving up your eligibility. I would presume if he comes back, he's going to Vanderbilt. All right, I, I would presume he's going to follow Mark Byington there. He could be, you know, he would be a complimentary player on Vanderbilt, I think. Or we'll find out he's just as good as he was in the Sun Belt. And I would presume his draft stock would go up outside of his age. And that's a, the age thing for these guys are overrated, right? I mean, what's the difference? You know, outside of that, he may be maxed out body wise, skill wise, you can always get better. I don't, I don't understand the whole age thing. Uh, so he signs a second contract and he's 28 and, he, and has a nice career. He's 10 year career. and He's 33. Good. All right. Anyway. So Terrence Edwards Jr. Dips his toe into the uh, draft process and transfer portal. Probably going to end up at Vanderbilt. Xavier Brown's an interesting one. Xavier Brown, the point guard who had that big, a ball game against uh, Arkansas State in the first half of the Seminole Championship game. Uh, he too went in the transfer portal. That's interesting because he didn't wasn't the starting point guard to begin the year. He flip flopped with Michael Green the third, and then I thought they played a lot together the other night. I thought uh, so. He's in the transfer portal, and then Jalen carries in the transfer portal. The big, you know, the the backup. I mean, are these guys, the backup center, I should say, um, are these guys going with Mark Byington to Vanderbilt? I mean, maybe Jalen Carey certainly had, I mean, he's just, he's just a freshman. Jalen Carey's certainly got some eligibility left. Certainly can see him coming off the bench in the SEC, you know. He can shoot it a little bit. That's going to get better uh, with time. I'm not so much sure how much I want to see him shooting a three on a regular basis or when they're losing, uh, which he did against Duke. But 
I'll find it very interesting uh, to see where these guys go. And I think, I mean, we got a whole list. Our guy, Howell Razor, uh, from... Uh, Uh, Jeremy Harper from uh, Fun Belt PC. He keeps a good track of all the transfers, uh, which is not necessarily the easiest thing in there. Uh, and you got a lot of guys hitting that transfer portal. I'm not sure if these guys, I mean, Trayvon Spillers, this is a really nice season, but it was 13 points and nine rebounds in the Sun Belt. Now, that's really nice for Trayvon at App State, but what do we think that's going to translate into a Power 5 league? Justin Abson doesn't have his blocks on here, but eight points and eight rebounds in the Sun Belt. I'm not trying to belittle the Sun Belt. I'm really not. But, right, I mean, JMU just beat Wisconsin of the Big Ten. That was one game, right? Uh, Jordan Marsh, uh, freshman point guard. Six and a half points a game, uh, six points a game um, in the um, uh, in the portal. Uh, you got a bunch of guys. Georgia State's got a handful of guys. Georgia Southern's got a few guys. Uh, the Cajuns so far, just two. Themis Folks, which was kind of known before. And Joe Charles, I think he may come back. We'll, we'll see what happens there. I'm not I'm not convinced he's taken off. Marshall, you have some guys uh, that are leaving. Uh, Alette from Old Dominion with his 17 and a half points a game. That's a big one. Chauncey Jenkins with his 16 points a game. That's a big one. Right? Old Dominion building again. Texas State losing a bunch of guys. Davion Sykes taking off. Brandon Love taking off. Jordan Mason. I got to believe those are NIL guys. Those guys are looking for NIL, which I don't blame them for. Okay. I don't blame them for looking for that, but some of these G5 teams are going to have to get some NIL money going. It can't be, you know, no one expects the G5 to be coming up with six figures for players, for one player. That's not going to happen. But the G5 teams are going to have to get it together, right? I mean, we see all the time Will Hall, or his account anyways, the head coach of Southern Miss football, Telling all of the Golden Eagles fans, you need to contribute. I just saw a thing with Clay Helton doing it. One of his players, you need to contribute. They were in an ad together. So the coaches know what's coming. Uh, I will say Troy doesn't have anybody. Uh, Troy, Randy, O'Valley, uh, you know, one point, one rebound a game. So uh, he's looking for more playing time. That's the difference, right? You can see the guys that are looking for more playing time, and you can see the guys that are trying to maybe cash a check. Jacob Meyer, guard from Coastal Carolina. I mean, 15 points a game, 15 and a half points a game. That's pretty good. All right. So they're looking to cash a check, and we'll see. We'll see what happens. What did not happen, at least not yet, at least that I didn't see on Tuesday, that Dustin Kearns left App State. So that has not happened. Uh, just yet either. Uh, all right, let's take a time out. When we come back, uh, Red Wolves with a tough loss. Admittedly, I did not watch the game, but I will read what uh, Carol Ritchie t uh, tweeted out, and I think I understand what happened because it's a it's a crazy thing that happened, and I'm not one to blame the officials, and I'm not even sure they got it wrong, but it's insane that they're allowed to be able to do this. All right, that's what we will talk about next, right after we tell you about Better Together and Amazon Fire TV. Has your bracket already busted? Yes. Tired of the same old daily fantasy grind where you make a roster, cross your fingers, and hope for the best? Or losing on the last leg of your pick -em entry? Introducing Better Together, the first cooperative daily fantasy platform where teamwork triumphs talent, and you can play with your friends, not against them. Pick more or less on real-time real player stats, strategize with your partner to boost your odds, and climb the leaderboard together. So grab a friend and join the social DFS movement. Download Better Together now from the App Store and sign up using promo code LOCKEDON for a chance to win your share of over $1,000 in cash prizes. Remember the code LOCKEDON because winning alone is fun. 
but it's better together. And Amazon TV. Fire TV is your destination for sports. From live games to highlights to in-depth analysis, Fire TV offers amazing viewing experiences with your smart TVs, as well as the Fire TV stick, which you can plug into your existing TV that provides access to millions of movies and TV episodes, as well as free and live TV. Whether it's opening weekend for baseball or the college basketball tournament, you're going to want to have a Fire TV. Fire TV recently created Fire TV channels to deliver a constant supply of the latest videos from your favorite sports brands, all for free. That includes all of us at Locked On and most of the big pro leagues and college conferences as well. Fire TV channels let you dive into all the game analysis, highlights, and more to keep up to date on all the latest in the world of sports. March Madness, NBA, Major League Baseball, opening day coming up on Thursday, by the way, and lots more. Not to mention great news, entertainment, gaming, travel, cooking videos as well. Check out Fire TV channels on Fire TV and Alexa devices. If you haven't checked out Fire TV channels, you should. Trust me on this. To learn more, visit www.amazon.com slash lockdown Fire TV. I enjoy my Fire TV. I have one and had it way before we started reading about it and telling you about it. So it comes in handy and I love it. All right, Dave Schultz, Lockdown Sunbelt, your team every day. Still, I'm going to wake up with a nasty voice tomorrow. I got a cough tonight. I keep on drinking. It is uh, something's not quite right. All right. Uh, Arkansas State in uh, the CBA. I have not gotten around to this, so I do apologize. Uh, you know, the Cajuns have played in this, uh, the, both the men and the women. Uh, the women won it a couple of times, I think, for the Cajuns. Uh, so it's a lot of fun when that happens. For those who don't know, you got to pay your way in as if the expenses aren't enough just to travel, but you got to pay to play. So there's something to that. Uh, having said that, it's been a minute since Arkansas State's won a post game, uh, a, a postseason game. And <coughs> good for Brian Hodgson to get his team together and saying, hey, you know, he said it at the uh, Sunbelt Commerce tournament. I want to coach Caleb Fields again. Any chance that I get to coach Caleb Fields again, I'm going to take it. And good for Caleb Fields for playing. They won a game, won two games. Uh, but they did lose to uh, to High Point. Um, but obviously, Brian Hodgson has this has this game go, has this uh, team going in the right direction. All right. So, again, I mentioned a call that went against them. And, I, again, I am not – I used to be. I can absolutely tell you this, okay? I used to be blame the refs, blame the refs, blame the refs, okay? You know, we get that a lot. You know, well, they shot 20 more free throws than we did. So they won the game because the refs gave them the game. All right. Um, Kara Ritchie tweeted this out. With 5.57 to go, Hicks had a shot blocked by Bodo Bodo, which is a great name. <laughs> That's a fantastic, okay? So Hicks for Arkansas State had his shot blocked by Bodo Bodo by high point. Okay. So this was six minutes to go in the game. The ball was batted almost directly to Dominguez. All right. So the Red Wolves would have had a second chance opportunity had it not been called goaltending. So Hicks's uh, Hicks's shot, his blocked shot, was called goaltending. All right. The play was reviewed two and a half minutes later at 327. This isn't like a, you know, if it's a three or a two where we can go back two minutes later and, you know, as long as it's not. You can't do that late in the game in case you need to know. But, you know, if there's – with six minutes left to go, did you hit a two or a three? We got a timeout coming up. Did you hit a two or a three? We called it a three. It was a two. We took a point away. Okay. That stinks, but that's the flow of the game. You can't do that with goaltending um, because they overruled it. They changed it. They said no goaltending. So Arkansas State actually, the shot was blocked and went back to Arkansas State. They had the ball again. But they called goaltending. They gave Arkansas State the points. But then they reviewed it and they took the points away. So if they reviewed it immediately, it would have been Arkansas State's ball side out 
if you will, right? Okay, disappointing we don't get the call. You overturn the call, but we get the ball because the ball was back at Arkansas State. Now you review it two and a half minutes later, and that's gone. Well, that stinks. <laughs> um, let me see here. Apparently, you can do this. A Red Wolves fan tweeted out, and Kara replied to him. They need to revisit the review of the goaltending call rule. Here's the problem with it. If the offense retains possession on the block, but goaltending is called, and then later reverse, you basically get cheated out of that second opportunity to score. Okay. Yeah, so that's, you, you can't be doing that. I You know, so the referees may not have even gotten it wrong in terms of how, how they played it out, but you can't review that. You can't, for a goaltending, you have to review it immediately. Immediately. That's not, that's not right. And that should be an easy fix. Although for me, a lot of times the goaltendings are tough to tell on replay. I kind of like a check swing in baseball. It, it looks like they always go. To me, it always looks like it's a block shot. And a check swing always looks like he goes around. Now, uh, I used to say, if you drop your hand, I'm, I'm, I want to make the calls as easy as I can for the officials. And so now we're we're, we're going to make it that the guy for a check swing, as I'm on a sidetrack, is making this call from 100 feet away. Really? At first or third? Stop. If you drop your hands, it's a swing. That's it. I mean, honestly, if you go from here to here, it's a swing. I don't care where the bat is. <laughs> There's no. I'm taking the check swing out of the game. I'm making it really easy for the umpires. You move. You can stride, but if you drop your hands, it's a, it's a swing. All right. Uh, these guys have enough issues, anyways, um, to be calling a play like that. Anyways, back to the. <laughs> sorry, back to the. Uh, uh, back to the goaltending, which is a real shame because. Just looking at these stats, uh, this game was as close as it could be. I actually broke it down because usually when you hit five more threes, you win the game. And that's what Arkansas State did. They uh, they made nine threes to high points uh, four. High point 181 to 80. But high point made one more field goal. And they made 27 two-pointers, where they made 54 points, whereas Arkansas State only made 21 two-pointers, which is 42 points. So although they outscored them by 15 at the three-point line, high point outscored them by four at the free-throw line, and combined with the twos, they ended up losing by one. If you check out those stats, they're about as outside of uh, the three-pointers, which was more than two to one and the bench points, which was high point 20 and Arkansas state zero. I think that may be an overrated stat a little bit because if you check out the starters points, then Arkansas state has outscored the high point starters by 19. But the issue is, can you put points on the board when your starters are down and high point, uh, did and Arkansas State did not. All right. So we'll once again we have been trying and uh they know it. We'll see if we can get Brian Hodgson on. We'll give him a chance to collect himself. By the way, he had a kid like like six weeks ago. So so he's gonna we'll give him a little breather. All right. I know he's probably gonna have to deal with a portal here uh coming up, but we'll we'll put in our request. To see if Brian Hodgson wants to come on uh, locked on Sunbelt. Still got to see if we can get Mike Jones as well. All right, let's take a time out. We will be back. We'll check out the baseball action in the Sunbelt on uh, Tuesday. Stay tuned for more. Let me tell you about uh, Nissan and eBay Motors. This week's March Madness Bracket Highlight is brought to you by our friends at Nissan. Each week, we're picking one team that stands out a team that's pushed it further than the rest. Just like any of the all-new 2024 Nissan SUVs, these guys were able to take it to the next level. The Iowa State Cyclones can only be described as a pathfinder. They've been thrilling to watch and have really created a lane for themselves, entering the tournament as one of the hottest teams in the country. They have a date with Illinois this Thursday in the Sweet 16. 
Take the Nissan Rogue, Nissan Pathfinder, or Nissan Armada and go find your next big adventure. ShopUSA.com. And eBay Motors. Passion, drive, and patience. What brings home the winning trophy also is also what keeps your ride or die alive. eBay Motors has everything you need to maintain your vehicle and level it up to peak performance. From superchargers, roof racks, exhaust kits, LED headlights, and more, whether you're in a speed, power, or style, eBay Motors has got you covered. With over 122 million parts for your number one ride or die, you'll always find exactly what you're looking for. And with eBay Guaranteed Fit, your part is guaranteed to fit your ride every time or your money back. Because with eBay Motors, you're burning rubber, not cash. With all of the parts you need at the prices you want, it's easy to turn your car into the MVP and bring home that win. Keep your ride or die alive at ebaymotors.com. Eligible items only. Exclusions apply. eBay guaranteed fit. Only available to U.S. customers. All right, Dave Schultz, Locked On Sunbelt, your team every day. We talked uh, JMU, uh, the three players, Xavier Brown, Jalen Carey, and Terrence Edwards Jr. hitting the portal. We talked the Red Wolves, tough loss. Really, I think it must have been a heck of a ball game. Admittedly, I did not watch it, but 81-80. And all the statistics outside of the bench scoring, which, again, I think is overrated, were about as close as it can be. So that was a, must have been a fun game to watch. Maybe I'll do that tomorrow or later today, as the case may be. Uh, all right, let's, talk, let's check out the baseball. And, you know, the best baseball I, – I, the Sun, the Sun Belt Syndicate does us a huge favor. They put out the scores for uh, the night. So I appreciate that because you go to the Sun Belt website and those things aren't necessarily all, all updated. Uh, Cajuns won tonight 12 to 4, fell behind, uh, grambling 4 0. It did not look uh, good for uh, McGahee uh, to begin with. Two hit batters, uh, apparently. Shortstop Kyle DeBarge was sick. He let one get past him. Backhanded side. Uh, Pastore at first threw one in the outfield. But they didn't give up anything else. Do I have the – let me see if I have the box score. Or I can read it from here. The top half of the lineup was ridiculous for the Cajuns. The top five. Um, Taylor, Mandino, DeBarge, Amity, and Pastore. All right. Those guys had, I believe – uh, eight base hits, two, four, five, six, oh, seven base hits. Sorry. Uh, they had seven base hits. They drove in two, four, six, seven runs. So seven runs, or uh, they drove in seven runs. They had seven base hits and they scored seven, and they scored seven runs. Pretty good. <laughs> no. So, um, Cajuns, you know, beat Grambling in a game that they they had to win. You know, again, we we talk about this a lot with the uh, with the uh, Warren Nolan RPI. It's gone up and down. Like I think they were they got up to sixty one and then maybe sixty two when the game started because what happened on Monday and games earlier in the day on the East Coast. Um, they were up to fifty nine after they won, but they fell back down to sixty two. So not that bad. Uh, a loss would have been devastating because they already have four losses in the quad four column. That is uh, two losses to Rice, a loss to Wright State. And I got to find the other one. It's a two, it can't be Tulane. Can it be Tulane? No, it can't be Tulane. I don't know what the other one is. But they, they lost to Rice and they lost to uh, uh, Wright State. That's three of the four uh, quad four losses. Uh, oh, maybe Arkansas State. Is that right? Now I'm now I'm bothering myself, getting off track. Um, Arkansas State would have to fall a far distance to come all the way down here. I don't think so. Um, I guess I could easily go back to uh, the Cajun schedule and see who it is. Uh, nonetheless, they've won eight in a row, and they're taking on Texas State, and that is huge. Even McNeese is 69, but they beat McNeese. They beat Northwestern State. Um, Tulane is RPI 93, so I guess that's a quad four game, I guess. I guess that's the quad four. Oh, Arkansas State is RPI 222. 
is 221. That has fallen dramatically after what was a uh, a really good start. So they are 221. So there's your they lost the first game of that series. All right. Uh big series with the Cajuns going to San Marcos to take on uh Texas State. And uh we'll see if Texas State can hold serve, take two out of three. Can the Cajuns go in there and uh win the series? They have not, you know, after not the greatest of all starts. They haven't lost a series since they went to Houston. Well, they got swept the first weekend of March. Then they took two out of three from Tulane, took two out of three from Arkansas State, and uh, took uh, swept Old Dominion. So again, they've won. They've won eight in a row. Let's see what Texas State. Their RPI is seventy-two. They won tonight. They took down. Uh, UT Rio Grande uh, Valley, 12 to six. They're playing well. They've won four out of five and beat James Madison, two out of three over the weekend. All right. They took the series from App State, two out of three. So they're off. Uh, they're playing well. They did lose two out of three to six. Oh, they got swept by Sam Houston. Whoa. So they got swept by Sam Houston believe that's Deggs' former team. So they got swept by uh, Sam Houston. They did beat. They were in the same Houston tournament as the Cajuns were. They did beat Houston 8-7 to and Texas 11-10, to and they had really ridiculous games. Those were fantabulous, fantabulous uh, walk-off games with home runs and craziness. They did lose to LSU, but that's not. They lost 10-5. That's not. The worst loss in the world, right? Losing to LSU. Although LSU's like RPI is like 30. Uh, all right. Elsewhere uh, tonight, uh, we gave you the cage. <coughs> Cages beat Grambling. Uh, Southern Miss over Tulane, nine, uh, nine to four. <coughs> Excuse me. Uh, South Alabama uh, came back. Uh, they got away with one. <laughs> Let's see if we got the, the game status here. Um, no, we got a box score scorecard. So this is back and forth. This is Alabama State. This is a two-two game after four. South Alabama put four on the board in the fifth, so they take a six-four lead. I'm sorry, six-two lead heading into the sixth. But Alabama State two in the sixth, two in the seventh, tie things up. South Alabama uh, takes the lead, uh, seven to six. Heading to the ninth, Alabama State scores three in the ninth. So does South Alabama. 10-9, South Alabama, what we like to call a come-from-ahead victory. All right, let's see what else we got. JMU over Radford, 12-7 uh, to seven in just six innings. I guess weather got the better part of that. Also, got to be really disappointing to Coastal Carolina not to have a chance at Clemson. They're third ranked in the nation. And number one in the Warren Nolan RPI. That would have been a big opportunity. Uh, Virginia Tech over Marshall, 4-2. to two. Georgia Southern with a run rule over the College of Charleston. <coughs> Excuse me, 13-3. to three. App State uh, is postponed. Arkansas State with a win, 7-4. to four. I think that's over Pine Bluff. Uh, Troy takes down Florida A&M, 12-2. And La Tech doubles up ULM, 8-4. Uh, to four. We'll go over more of the of the series uh, uh, coming up uh, probably in tomorrow's episode because I think there's another good series besides the Cajuns and the Bobcats, but that's really uh, the big one. All right, that went a little bit long. Uh, thanks for tuning in. Don't forget, uh, if you here are here in Lafayette and watching this, trying to keep these two shows well, at least separate in my mind, we have started uh, the Schultz cast. Uh, you're certainly welcome to subscribe. Um, I mean, I start out with like 10 subscribers and I'm already up to like 75 or something in that ballpark. So that's all in two days. So I do appreciate it. Uh, we'll see how quickly we can get to a thousand. Uh, thanks so much for tuning in to a lockdown Sunbelt, your team every day. I'm your host, Dave Schultz. Have a great uh, day, everybody. And we'll talk to you again tomorrow.